So I want to begin by telling you and asking you a question, actually. How many of you have ever had guests over to dinner at your house? Do you ever notice that you'll have a meal, you'll have dessert, you'll hang out for hours, and then it's time for your friends to go home. And the most meaningful conversation of the whole night will begin in front of your front door with the door open. And you'll stand there with your front door open and open your heart. I call that a threshold conversation. That's what you and I are going to have right now. You and I are going to talk like we're old friends. We're going to talk like we've just had a wonderful meal together. You've had dessert. You're on your way home. And that's when it happens. Psalms 34 verse 6. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. That's Psalm 34, verse 6. Look me in the eye. God is trying to save you from your troubles, your worries, your fears. It was an amazing day recorded in the fourth chapter of Luke when Jesus publicly announced who he was and what he was going to do while he was with us. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. And he listed the litany of human sorrow, grief and pain and said, I'm going to target all of it. I'm going to go after it. And he publicly admitted, I'm going to have an effect on the human race that no one has ever had before. I'm going to do what no pill can do, no relationship can do, no money can do, no power can do, no emotion can do it. And then he used one word to bind up, a phrase rather, bind up the brokenhearted. You know what is possible? Is that you're sitting looking at me and you have a broken heart and you might not even know it. You might not even know that you're acting like a person with a broken heart. This poor man cried to the Lord. He cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. You know, you want to cry out. Sometimes you don't even understand why that desire to scream is so real in you. So here is the story of Jacob. And to understand Jacob, that his name in modern terms would mean con artist. He's a con artist. Let me tell you about the con artist. They know they're a con artist. They can't fool anyone until they fooled themselves first. But he knew it. My life is a lie. My life is not real. Here's Jacob. I'm not valid. I'm not legitimate. I don't have an identity that I can say is valid. I stole my brother's blessing. All of my life, I've manipulated my way out of things. And the grief and the pain and the pile of sorrow and regret kept growing. Let me tell you what the Bible says in the 32nd chapter of Genesis, verse 24. Then Jacob was left alone. You know how you know I have a broken heart? It's hard for you to be alone. When you're alone, people that fear being alone because then the soundtrack of their life, the volume goes up. The mistakes come to the front. The emptiness of it all starts echoing in them. But the Bible says 
Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the break of day. Most Orthodox Christian Bible experts say this was God, not just a man. God showed up. You know, it is strange how people act when God shows up. When God shows up, you turn into a child. When God shows up, you're ready to confess. And, and you don't want to even admit you're wrong. And there you are in front of God saying, God, I've done it wrong. I've lived wrong. I've been wrong. And the Bible says that he grabbed God. You don't know what's in you. You don't understand the explosive potential of the need for a heart to confess. The need to confess can become overwhelming, overpowering. And in an instant, here you are with the emptiness of your life and the fullness of God is standing in front of you. Everything you've ever wanted is right there. Everything you've ever needed and didn't know you needed. Everything you wanted and didn't know you wanted is standing right in front of you. And he knew what the Bible taught. He knew what tradition taught. That if you grab God, he'll kill you. If you see God, it'll kill you. But he didn't care. He grabbed and began wrestling. And he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let me tell you something right now, sitting in this chair. I don't care if you go to church. I don't care if you believe in the Bible. I don't care if you have claimed for years to be walking with God. There's a bankruptcy in your spirit. There's a depression in your soul. There's a loneliness. There's this, this incredible thing that modern life has created. It's a monster. I don't care how beautiful you are. Modern life will find a way to make you feel ugly. Inadequate, not enough. You're never going to be thin enough, smart enough, rich enough, good enough, strong enough. It's never going to be enough. And the Bible says that's the spirit of hell. It says that hell is never satisfied. Somewhere someone's going to make you feel unimportant. Somewhere you're going to feel the tang that you don't measure up. And the Bible says that Jacob had had enough. I pray to God that you've had enough. I pray that you've had enough of lonely nights broken relationships, devastating dreams blowing up in your face because you've lived by your power and your own wits and you've tried to artificially take the place of God himself in your life. You've tried to do what only God can do. And so Jacob grabbed a hold of God and he wouldn't let go. I want to tell you our version of that is the presence of God that's under this tent. It's a scary thing. When I first began preaching under tents, I cried out to God. I said, God, I don't ever care if I'm eloquent. I don't care if I'm up to date. But what I do want is the presence of God to be in that tent so strong that the drug addict will say, I can be set free. And the alcoholic can say, I can do this in one step instead of 12. 